Chemistry lecture number 57, formula for a hydrate. There are some compounds that look like dry crystals but actually have water molecules trapped inside the crystals. These compounds are called hydrates. A hydrate is a compound that has a specific, specific number of water molecules bound to its atoms. For example, Epsom salt is the common name of a magnesium sulfate compound that contains water molecules. For every formula unit of magnesium sulfate, there are seven water molecules trapped within the crystal. So I have uh, some magnesium sulfate right here. So this is just stuff you can get at the store. And, and there it is. That's magnesium sulfate. It's just a uh, white crystal. And it looks dry, but there's actually water molecules trapped within the uh, crystals. All right. To indicate that there are seven water molecules attached to the magnesium sulfate, we write magnesium sulfate and tack on 7H2O. We separate magnesium sulfate and 7H2O with a dot. Uh, the formula looks like this, magnesium sulfate dot 7H2O. And this compound would be called magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. Hepta prefix means seven. If there were, um, say, three waters, then it would be trihydrate. And if there were, like, two waters, it would be dihydrate. If there were six waters, it would be hexahydrate. So the prefix tells you the number of water molecules that are attached. Hydrates composed of uh, ionic compounds in water can be heated to remove the water and leave behind the ionic compound as a residue. The residue weighs less than the original hydrate. The difference in mass allows us to calculate the amount of water attached to each formula unit of the ionic compound. For example, copper 2-sulfate exists as a hydrate. This is a deep blue crystal. Uh, but when heated, the water evaporates and the compound turns, a faint, turns white with a faint blue color. And I can show you a picture of that. So, these three photographs right here show copper sulfate. Here's the hydrated form as a blue color. And then when you start to heat it, the blue color starts to disappear and the water is evaporating and then when all the water is finally removed from the hydrate it has sort of a white color. Kind of hard to see right there. Let me lift it up a little bit more. Okay, well anyway, um, that's the color change that occurs with this particular compound as the water is evaporated out of the crystal. The steps used to calculate the formula of the hydrate after being heated are as follows. Uh, you find the mass of water evaporated and the mass of the remaining residue, and you convert these values to moles. Now, sometimes in some problems, they already tell you the mass of water and the mass of the remaining residue. Other problems, you have to calculate both of these. Anyway, the second step would be uh, to divide by the smallest number of moles to get the ratio of, of ionic compound residue to water. And then you write the formula of the hydrate with the number of water molecules in front of the uh, H2O. Uh, you put a dot between the ionic compound formula and the number of the water number of water molecules. All right, so let's do a problem to explain what all these words mean. 2.49 grams of blue hydrated copper sulfate are heated. Uh, after heating, 1.59 grams of white anhydrous CuSO4 remains. What is the formula for the hydrate? What is the name of the hydrate? Well, first we need to find the mass of one mole of copper sulfate and one mole of water. You should memorize that one mole of water is 18 grams. It's used so often, you should just memorize it. All right, so for copper sulfate, one copper, and then from the periodic chart, copper is 63.5. Sulfate, S, one sulfur. From the periodic chart, sulfur is 32.1. Oxygen, four oxygens. So four times 16. 16 from the periodic chart for oxygen, that gives me 64. We add it all up, we get 160. And this is rounded to three significant figures. For water, H2O. Hydrogen, two hydrogens. Hydrogen is 1.01, .01, so we get 2.02 .02 if we multiply that. One oxygen, and then oxygen is 16. Add it up, you get 18. And then these molar masses are rounded to three significant figures. All right, so we have the molar mass of copper sulfate and the molar mass of water. We're going to take these values onto the next page, right here and here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out 
how much uh, water was in the crystal. They tell you the total mass of the crystal which contains the water is 2.49. So this 2.49 represents the copper sulfate combined with the water. And then the mass of the copper sulfate by itself after the water has been removed is 1.59. So if we subtract these two, that will give us the mass of water. So we have 0 0.90 grams of water that's trapped within the uh, hydrate crystal. All right, notice this is two significant dig digits. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the mass of water divided by 18 to get the moles of water. We'll take the mass of the copper sulfate and divide it by 160 to get the moles of copper sulfate. So here we go. 1.59 grams of the copper sulfate divided by 160 gives me 0 0.00994 moles of copper sulfate. And then 0.9 grams of uh, water divided by 18 that gives us 0 0.050 moles of water. So that's how many moles of copper sulfate and moles of water that's in the hydrate crystal sample that we have. So we're going to take these values and we're going to divide them by the smallest number of moles. Looks like 0 0.00994 is smaller than 0 0.05 so we're going to divide both of these numbers by 0 0.00994. So <clears throat> that's what we do right here. 0 0.00994 divided by itself gives 1. 0 .0 uh, point zero point oh five oh. I had to scribble in a zero there. Um, but anyway, point oh five oh moles of water divided by point nine nine four gives me five, and this is the two significant uh, digits. All right. So it looks like the ratio of copper sulfate to water is one to five. All right. So that means that the formula of the hydrate is going to be CuSO four five H two O. And the name of this compound is going to be called copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. Penta, because that's the prefix for five. So there are five water molecules uh, trapped with each copper sulfate formula unit. Let's try another one 10.41 grams of hydrated barium iodide is heated. After heating, the dry sample has a mass of 9.52 grams. What is the formula and name <coughs> excuse me, of the hydrate? All right, so we have to figure out how much one mole of barium iodide weighs. So one barium, and barium is 137 on the periodic chart, gives us that. I2, two iodides, 2 times 127, that's off the periodic chart, 127 gives me 254. Add it all up, one mole of barium iodide is 391 grams per mole. And then one mole of water from the previous problem is 18 grams per mole. This you should just memorize. All right, so now that we have the molar mass of each compound, let's figure out how much uh, water we have trapped in the crystal. So 10.41 grams of the hydrate, so this 10.41 represents the combined mass of the barium iodide and the water. And then the barium iodide by itself is 9.52. So this is the uh, barium iodide that remains after the water has been removed. So if we subtract these two, that gives us the mass of water that's uh, been evaporated from it. All right. So we now know that the mass of water is 0.89. We know the mass of barium iodide is 9.52. We'll take 0.89 divided by 18 to get the moles of water and we'll take 9.52 and divide it by 391 to get the moles of barium iodide. So that's what we do in the next step. 9.52 grams of barium iodide divided by 391 gives us 0 0.0243 moles of barium iodide and then 0.89 grams of water divided by 18 grams of water gives 0 0.049 moles of water. We now look at these and see which one's the smallest one. Well, 0.0243 is smaller than 0.049, so we're going to divide both of these by 0.0243. If we do that, 0.0243 divided by itself gives 1, and then 0.049 divided by 0.0243 gives 2. And then, so it looks like the ratio of barium iodide to water is 1 to 2. There are two water molecules attached to each barium iodide uh, formula unit. So the formula of the hydrate is going to be Bi2, BAI2 dot 2H2O. And the name of the hydrate is barium iodide dihydrate. The di because that's the prefix for 2. All right, so there's our formula and there's our name. 
For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture Number 57, Formula for a Hydrate.